In this module, we're going to be discussing the concepts of warranty, expense, and warranty liability. So a warranty is generally a situation where a company offers a guarantee that their product that they're selling you will work for a specified period of time. Sometimes you'll see this referred to as number of years, number of months. For vehicles, it's sometimes number of miles. But again, they guarantee that the product will work defect-free or with certain limitations for a specific period of time. If the product does not work as intended, they will do generally one of three things. They'll either give you a cash settlement of some sort, they may just replace the product altogether, which is fairly common, or they may fix the product regardless of what parts, what labor it takes, they'll take care of that for you. Now in some cases, as in the case with a vehicle, when you go in for a warranty claim, generally you're going to have some sort of deductible, not all the time, but in some cases you will. And earlier I mentioned the limitations that they have, so it may not be a full unlimited warranty, especially with larger things like vehicles, but for a VCR or a DVD player or a, uh, you know, a video game console, these are tending to be unlimited. So if you think about this situation, if you have two identical companies that have the same basic product and they offer the same service, they serve the same customer base, and one of them offers a warranty and the other one doesn't, customers are going to tend to go to the company with a warranty because they can trust the product. The company is standing behind their product. Now what's going to happen there is either they're going to be able to uh, sell this product at a higher price or if they have the same price they're just going to have a higher sales volume. More people will come to the, the company with the warranty. So you're going to have an impact on revenue is what we're trying to say here. You're going to have increased revenues generally over the company that does not offer a warranty. Now the reason you're going to have the increased revenue is the warranty itself. Now that comes with a downfall as well that you're going to have increased expense. Unless your product is perfect and yes you offer a warranty but you never have any issues with the product. In that situation you wouldn't have any expense but in reality you're going to have expense related to the warranty claims that will eventually come through. Now the problem here is that we're not going to know about these expenses until, you know, if we have a two year warranty we may not know about these expenses until two years later. If we waited to record the expense when we knew what the claim was, we would be violating the matching principle of accounting. Matching principle requires that anytime we have an expense that directly relates to a revenue, we want to record it in the same period. Now the same situation was discussed in a bad debt expense module, accounts receivables and bad debts. It's a similar situation where we have increased sales revenue because we offered the flexibility of payment. In that situation we had increased bad debt expense and we wanted to try to match it with that revenue in the proper period. The big difference with warranty is that we actually have a liability we are setting up. We do owe something to the customer. It's a different situation than bad debt. So again, in our two-year warranty example, we're not going to know the exact amount of the warranty until that two years has expired, which obviously is going to be in a separate accounting period. So in order to do some sort of matching, similar to what we did with the bad debt expense, we have to estimate what warranties we think are going to come through. Based on past history, based on industry standards, just whatever, whatever we use as a basis, we set up an estimate for warranties. So what we're doing here essentially is setting up a fund to handle future warranty claims as they come through. I use that term fund, sometimes I'll use the just a generic phrase, a cushion account. We're setting that up so that we can handle the warranties as they come through without having to record warranty expense again. Now this, again, this fund I'm talking about here is a liability count unlike the bad debt expense which was an allowance for doubtful accounts, a contra account, a contra asset account. 
So this is an example of what a journal entry would look like to record estimated warranty expense. So in this case, let's assume that we have a product that's sold in the amount of $40,000, and the management estimates that the warranty expense will be 5% of sales. They may have been using prior history. For some reason, they got a 5% estimate. So if you take 5% of $40,000, you're going to get a $2,000 estimate. What we're essentially saying here is for this particular product, this could be a car, $40,000, it could be a car. We assume that over the two-year period, there's going to be about $2,000 worth of warranty expense. Now, again, this is on average. You may have one car that comes through without ever having a warranty claim. You may have another car that comes through with five or $10,000 of warranties. This is on average across all of our sales. So the journal entry to record this warranty expense, this estimated warranty expense in the period of sale would be a debit to warranty expense to increase it. This is where we're matching with the revenue. And the credit needs to go to estimated warranty liability. We're crediting that liability to increase it. And we're reflecting the fact that now we have an additional $2,000 that we can use as warranty claims come through. Now, earlier I talked about three potential ways we can record a warranty claim as it comes through. Now, again, this doesn't matter what year it comes through as long as it's within the two-year period, or whatever the warranty period is. In this example, the first claim we're going to have is where they decided to pay a cash payment of $1,500 for this particular defect. So notice this is in 2017, the next accounting period. What we are going to do here is debit estimated warranty liability to reduce it. In other words, we're using some of that fund up. We're going to credit cash for $1,500 because we're paying cash in this example. The more common situation is where we replace the inventory. Let's say it's still worth $1,500 that they're replacing. Maybe this is, uh, I don't know what, $1,500 would be a really, really, uh, high-end TV, let's say, or fairly high-end TV. So in this situation, they would, again, debit estimated warranty liability for $1,500. And this case, they would credit inventory for $1,500 because they are using up the inventory. They're reducing it. They're giving it back to the customer. Now, notice that inventory was recorded at cost. So regardless of the fact that the inventory was worth $1,500, that may be something they normally sell for $2,500 or more. Another potential claim would be where they use up some supplies or parts, and then they use labor to put it together to fix it. So in this case, they're using up $400 of parts and $1,100 of labor. So here we would still des debit estimated warranty liability for $1,500, but in this case, we would be crediting supplies to reduce it for $400, and we would be crediting salaries payable to reduce that, or I'm sorry, to increase that by $1,100 because we're paying our employees. We're setting up a liability due to the fact that we owe the employees. Now, of course, this could also be a credit to cash if we're paying those employees right away, but the general rule is that we'd be setting up a salaries payable. Now this brings us to our, our final slide here, showing how the T account, how the actual estimated warranty account, the estimated warranty liability account would change over time. So keep in mind, this is an estimate. And in, in, a, in a perfect situation, we would like management to keep this to a relatively low number. By the end of each period, in a perfect world, this would go to zero or very close to zero, and we would start the next period fresh. But that doesn't always happen, and it doesn't need to happen. It's, an, it's a liability account that keeps its balance from period to period. We don't have to close it out. So what I'm showing here is just a, an example where we had three types of transactions going through. So here we had some $15,000 of warranty expense for maybe the first part of year one, then another $25,000 of warranty expense for year one as well, the later part of it. 
Now, notice these two credits, that's the credit to estimated warranty liability from our normal journal entry. Remember, we would debit warranty expense, credit estimated warranty liability. So what I'm saying here is we have a total of $40,000 in credits. This is money we've added to the fund for the warranty liability account. Now, let's say that all of our claims came through for year two, $45,000. We debit the account for $45,000. If you look at the balance of this account, now it's going to be $5,000 on the debit side. The problem with this is that a liability account has a normal credit balance, but we're now saying that the balance of this particular account at this point in time is $5,000 on the debit side. What that means is this is a negative account at this point, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that necessarily. We don't want it to continue to be negative, but many accounts, even though they have a normal balance, can fall on the negative side from time to time. What this would essentially mean is that our warranty expense percentage, or whatever the dollar amount was, was too low. So we may want to increase this a little bit for future periods. So what did I say? 5% was our warranty expense in our earlier example. Maybe we would want to change this to 6% so that this account will start to move over to the positive side. Now, on the other hand, if you have an account that continually grows on the credit balance side, it continues to increase period after period, what that probably tells us is we have a too, we have too high of a warranty percentage. So in that case, we would want to reduce it a bit. In any case, that wraps up our discussion of warranty expense and liabilities. The key thing to remember is that it has to be reported in the period of the sale with whatever estimate we have.